I'm at Ducati UK. They've got a bit of a media day going on and they've got all their fleet bikes available to, to test ride, basically. So uh, I'm taking out the Hypermotards in a comparison between the SP and the standard one. I'll put a link to that video at the top if I've not published that already. And they've also got the Desert X here. So while this is here, I will borrow this and do a sort of proper review with, with this bike and probably also a comparison with Greg between this and the Norden 701 which I love because it's very similar sort of bikes aren't they so but we're going to do a first ride on this machine here now I'll let you know my initial impressions of this what I think to it how it sort of compares in my mind to how the Norden was so I'll give you some sort of comparisons based on memory but uh, I love the look of it very obviously very Dakar very sort of retro as well with the two twin headlights love the styling really like the styling so let's jump aboard take this for a little bit of a thrash around the Silverstone countryside and I'll let you know my initial impressions of the new Ducati Desert X drop Z roll the intro <laughs> so it comes in the white and the white <laughs> I think there is other colours are available but it does look rather striking in a sort of pleasant matte white you know it's um it's certainly a, certainly a striking looking machine i think i love this i love the style of it i think it definitely is my sort of favorite style of middleweight adventure bike i really like what they've done with this from the looks perspective i think they're on to a winner Right, jumping aboard. Oh, it's quite a big bike. It's quite high. Suspension's nice and soft. Let's fire her up. Oh, very unusual. Very um, T7 Yamaha in the display, isn't it? But obviously a full TFT. That's a nice layout. I do like that. Right, let's go. Jumping on it. It's all quite thin. I think it's got quite a big fuel tank on this. I'm not sure the exact size. Like I say, it's just a first ride. I haven't done any research on this. So, you know, I'll bring you an in-depth review with all the specs and details. But this is just really an initial impressions of this machine. Quick shifter. I actually don't think it has a quick shifter. I think that was me just uh, banging it <laughs> to second. Hang on. Oh, well, maybe I'm not sure if it has or not. It must have, but not the smoothest of quick shifters. This has got the uh, Testa Strata engine in it, the same as the Hypermotard, same as the V2 Multistrada, same as the, the Monster. 114 horsepower, 97 <laughs> Newton meters of torque. You know, lots of grunt. Lots and lots of grunt, which is what you want out of a road bike at the end of the day. Some sort of semi knobbly tyres on it. I'll be a little bit careful pushing it around the corners. They are sort of road based, but um, yeah, you've got to be a little bit careful. Whoa! Oh, it's got a lot of initial grunt there. Yeah, this display is cool, isn't it? I really like the layout of that. And it's actually got a fuel gauge as well, 180 miles range. It's got a fuel gauge. Hurrah! The Ducati with a fuel gauge. That's oh, nice, it's nice handling. It changes direction nicely. It's quite soft the suspension. I think it's it's definitely, you know, this is this is a an off-road, on-road machine. I guess you can compare this to the 890 rally duke you know uh, i'd say the norden's probably feels like it could be a little bit more road focused the norden actually in comparison with this i think this is more because i can tell the suspension feels softer there seems to be more travel in the suspension than what there was in the norden the norden was quite a, a firm ride on the road this is definitely a bit softer probably a little bit more off-roady focused the screen is miles away i'm getting quite a lot of wind on my helmet quite a lot of buffeting I don't think that screen is adjustable either from the looks of it and it's quite noisy you know I'm not right behind that screen that's a 30 it's quite a long way in front of me so I think air is coming in coming around the screen and then sort of coming in again so I'm getting quite a lot of wind noise because that you know the front of the bike does seem a long way away sounds nice plenty of go as well 
the engine, it sounds a bit like the Norden, you know, and then the Norden's got the 890 parallel twin in it. This is a, this is a proper, so proper, V-twin. So you've got a real V-twin in this. And I do love the old parallel twins, you know, with the cross-plane cranks in them. They're amazing, amazing engines, very lightweight as well. And they, you know, they do deliver all the torque. But you, I don't know, it's quite nice having a, a genuine V-twin here, or L-twin, whatever, whatever you want to call it, but I do quite like the fact that it's, it's a V-motor in this. We found the cameraman, so let's, let's, let's make the most of him. Let's do a flyby. Oh, ball bag, I've got to turn around somewhere now. Steering lock, look at the steering lock on that, that's incredible. Anyway, enough of that messing about for the cameras. Vibration wise, because it is a V twin, I mean, you, you can't have your cake and eat it. There's a few little vibes through the seat through the bars as well, you know, there's a few little vibes on it, not not showstoppers, but I'd say a bit more vibey than the likes of the Norden. But um, perfectly acceptable, I, I could live with that. And what I do like is this very compliant suspension. With a lot of wind noise, I mean I'm doing 70, and you can probably hear it on the helmet, there's a lot of wind noise. I'm 6'2", I'm getting a lot of wind noise off that, off that screen. Yeah, quick shifter. Lower down the rev range is uh, yeah, it's a bit a bit clunky. <laughs> Almost to the point where I'm thinking, has it actually got a quick shifter? Am I just knocking it up and down through the box like an animal? But I'm, I'm sure it has. But you wouldn't want to use that all the time. I have noticed, yeah, the quick shifter on this Tesla Tesla Strata engine. It's not as smooth as some of the other quick shifters on the uh, Super Quattro engine like in the uh, V2 Street Fighter and certainly the quick shifter in the V4 motors is butter, buttery smooth. Not quite so, not quite so refined on the Testa Strata engine. Testa Strata! Let's have a little bit of a walk around of the Desert X while we've got it stopped on a bit of a dirty track. I like the 90 sort of inspired twin headlights with the DRLs around the outside. Very 90s looking. I also like this sort of patterning on the screen as well. It's not, I like the styling. I like where they're coming with the styling on this. You've got aluminium belly pan down there and also, you know, a rad guard. I presume that's standard. Because of its off-road focus, you can see you've got guards for the engine casing, frame guards, you know, up here as well. So. You, know, you can definitely sort of get the fact that it's it's an off-road based machine this you know, you've got these protective plastics on it from the factory pirelli scorpion tires i've been really impressed with these as a road tire with a bit of off-road capability sort of gravel lanes these are actually really really good these pirelli scorpions and you've got tubeless wheels tubeless rims as well that with the spokes right on the outside so you don't have to use tubes tubeless naughty little brembo Rear caliper. Grab rail on the back and quite a funky little uh, rear little tail light on there as well, like that. I think as an optional extra on this, you can have another eight litres worth of fuel on the back and then it can be pumped into the front tank when it gets sort of half out. So you can have eight litres set on the rear, which can then be pumped into the front. What are you doing, love? The screen is really nice. I think that's a real classy layout with the screen. I like what they've done there. And fuel gauge, range till empty on a Ducati, a fuel gauge. Still can't get over it. But there we go, the Desert X. Let's jump back on. Oh, it's so nice to stand up on. Grip with your knees. Has it got any cruise control? Yeah, it's got cruise control. Cruise on a set it like that, do you? Yeah, cruise control. Yeah, that's nice. No handed. Cue the uh, Titanic music. See you later, alligator. Uh, 
little bit here, faster corner, gets a little bit, it's a bit of a bumpy faster corner. Follows a little bit, oh, into a 30. Woo, front brake. <laughs> There's loads of stopping power. I found myself a bit of a dirt lane. I'm not sure whether this is an official boat by the way open to all traffic, but I'm just going to do 100. 100 yards down it just to see. You know, a little quick feel for how it feels off-road over a bit of gravelly, undulating, muddy stuff. For you people who love a bit of muddy rutting. But I haven't bothered changing modes or anything, I just want to get a feel for it. As I thought, stood up, at my, I'm 6'2", it's a really comfortable bike off-road. The bars are at a perfect height for me. Yeah, this is nice. Soaks up the bumps, you can tell that suspension is very soft. You know, it's definitely got a good off-road focus, this bike. Oh yes. That does perhaps feel a bit more off-road capable than the Northern, actually. Loads of suspension travel. That's lovely. Hell yeah. Right, we need to do a bit more of that, I think, when we do a full test of this. But that's for initial impressions, it's going to be brilliant off-road. But is it a bit too expensive for something you want to take off-road? I guess it's the question. Is it a bit too nice, a bit too pretty to be, uh, you know, something to take down lanes and drop? I don't know. I guess that's the question. I mean, the, the T7 Yamaha, the Touareg from Aprilia, you know, they're more sort of 10 grand. You know, they're a lot cheaper than this. I do wonder whether you'd really want to spend you know, this sort of money on the bike you're going to go drop down lanes. I know you can get all the crash bars and stuff for it, but things are going to break. So, you know, they, they've definitely built some good off-road potential into this, but whether you want to take a bike of this value off-road and as pretty as this off-road, I'm really not sure. So there we go, quick initial impressions video of the new Desert X. It's, it, I think it seems very, very good. It's definitely worth following up with a more in-depth review of this machine. What I will do is I'll do a comparison with this and the Norden with Greg. I'll get Greg organised. We'll, get a, we'll come up here, do a comparison of the Norden versus the Desert X and see which one's best. I think this is a fair bit more money in normal Ducati fashion. I think this is around the £15,000 mark. I'll put it on the screen if I've got that wrong. But uh, I think it's definitely worth a comparison with the Norden because if you're looking for a, you know, an off-roady middle way, the Norden is my favourite. So it seems only right to compare it to the latest offering from Ducati. So if you're interested in that and you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button. If you can think of any other good comparisons to do, not just with this, but with any other bikes on the market at the moment, let me know in the comments below because I'll try and get that organised. I want to really concentrate on doing some comparisons with Greg because they've been a little bit lacking this year so far. So let me know what you want to see in the comments. And that's it, and I will see you on the next video. Take care, guys. See you later. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, <laughs>